Um, so thanks for doing this interview with me. <laughs> Oh, great, great to be here. <laughs> um, so first of all, uh, what makes this moon different from all other moons? <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful way to put that too, I love that. Um, we actually have a, a wonderful coincidence this month where every month the moon gets a little bit closer and a little bit farther away. When the moon is closest, we say it's at perigee, closest to the Earth. And the full moon is occurring right at perigee this month. So when the moon's a little closer, that means it's a little bit bigger. And because it's a full moon, it's going to look like this beautiful, big, bright full moon in the sky. And that's what we call a super moon. Great. Um, and what is the closest approach uh, for this moon? And what has it been for other years in the past and um, in the future? Well, actually, the, the closest approach is ever going to get from us this time is actually uh, 357,000 kilometers. That's about the distance. And we actually had a closer supermoon in 2011, and we will have a slightly closer supermoon than this in 2016. Now, we, we talked about that word perigee. Perigee is when the moon is closest to the Earth. Well, that distance can actually vary month to month a little. So sometimes perigee is even a little closer to the Earth than other times. This is actually not as close as 2011 or 2016, but it's the closest it's been for a couple of years. So uh, this is actually the closest it'll get for 2013, for example. All year long, this is the closest the moon will get. Oh, interesting. And why does, why does that vary? Is it um, just the orbit of the moon uh, slightly it changes? Actually, or? Oh, no, I was saying that that's a wonderful question. So the, uh, the, the perigee distance, the closest that the moon gets, can actually vary by as much as the diameter of the Earth. And that seems like a pretty big number. But the moon is actually 30 times the diameter of the Earth away from us. So if you line up 30 Earths, that's about the average distance of the moon away. But as it swings a little bit closer to us, that, that distance can vary. And it has to do with how the sun, the Earth, and the moon line up you actually get the closest supermoons of all during the winter. Because during the winter, that's actually when the Earth is closer to the sun. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to realize that, but we're actually closest to the sun in December. And when you're a little closer to the sun, the sun's gravity is a little stronger, and that actually pulls the moon a little bit too. So in, in fact, the biggest supermoons you ever get are in the winter. Huh, that's really interesting. Um, kind of a fun little trivia there, area. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Uh, and so can anybody see the supermoon? Is it visible in the northern and the southern hemisphere, or is it a little less super in the southern hemisphere? The, uh, the moon is actually the same distance to all the Earth at once, so it doesn't matter where on Earth you are. The full moon that you'll see will be the biggest for 2013. And uh, as far as viewing it, you know, it, it's not going to change in size very much over the course of one night. So I would say go out at sunset. Uh, you can actually see here, here's a graphic that compares the size of the moon at perigee closest to apogee. And uh, you can actually see that there is a difference. It's not a lot. It's about 12 percent. But actually, that 12% that size difference can mean as much as a 30% change in the brightness. So this will be a particularly bright supermoon. And uh, just sort of for, for a fun little fact, the, the actual moment of the supermoon, when it is both the most full and the closest, is about 7.30 AM on Sunday. So that, that's unfortunately after the moon is set for us. But I would say go out any time at night on Saturday. It's particularly good right at sunset and, and enjoy the biggest full moon of the year. Great. And um, scientifically, is there anything that researchers are hoping to, to learn from this supermoon? Is, is there anything that it can help uh, investigate? Well, you know, the, the supermoon for us is kind of a, a, a fun chance to talk about the changes in the sky, observing the universe. As scientists, we like to observe the moon from a little bit closer up. And uh, right now we have LRO, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, a spacecraft actually orbiting the moon. And we're taking these incredible high resolution pictures of the entire lunar surface. We can actually see the Apollo landing sites. We can, we can see the, the footprints that the astronauts left. Uh, we're doing all kinds of explorations of things like the poles, that the polar regions of the moon have craters in them that never see the sunlight. They're actually dark all the time. And even though we can't take very good images because they're dark, we've been bouncing lasers down. We've been actually exploring the topography, the shape of these craters. And we think there might even be quite a bit of ice trapped below the lunar soil in these permanently shadowed craters. So I would have to say that as a scientist, the supermoon is a fun chance for us to talk about the moon. Get out, think about the moon, observe the changes you see. The actual scientific research that NASA is doing is quite a bit closer to the moon. Okay. Um, and uh, if, if you wouldn't mind maybe talking a little bit about uh, tidal change during the supermoon. Um, is it significant or is it sort of like any other full moon? 
Well, the uh, the title change is kind of a fun thing to see if you can measure it at all. I mean, like you were saying, the uh, of the highest tides of the month you get either at new moon or full moon. These are called the spring tides. They happen because the moon and the sun are lined up. They're all pulling in the same way on the Earth. Um, in the case of the supermoon, the tides might be slightly higher. They, they actually call these proxygian tides, kind of a, a fun word. But we think the difference is probably less than one inch. So it's not going to be noticeable. There, there, there's no chance of coastal flooding. It's not that type of thing. But the tides might be just very slightly larger than typical full moon, full moon tides. Okay. So something like a couple inches, if we can measure it at all. I, I would say less than an inch on average, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, so so just sort of a fun question. What what do you think is the strangest or the most interesting fact about the supermoon um, that that you can share? <laughs> you know, as a scientist, I I think that one of the things that I think is very interesting is the fact that the perigee distance varies that much. You know, I think about the moon orbiting around the Earth. It's an elliptical orbit. It's not a circle. So sure, sometimes it's a little bit farther away. Sometimes it's closer. But I didn't realize at first that the closest approach it makes can vary that much. We mentioned before about the diameter of the Earth. And uh, a friend of mine who's a, a baseball fan said, if you picture yourself in a baseball stadium, that's kind of like the distance from, you know, uh, say, say you're at the pitching mound to the start of the central outfield. Uh, a supermoon might be that distance. Normally you might be at home plate compared to the outfield. So it's, it's, it's not a huge change, but it's a bigger change than I knew about before I started studying what the supermoon really means. Yeah, that is really interesting. Um, and then also just one last question. Is it, is it just a happy coincidence that the solstice happens to be occurring at the same time or near the same time as the supermoon? <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. So the, the solstice is coming up. That's also just a happy coincidence, like you said. The full moon can happen at, at, at pretty much, the, the supermoon can happen pretty much any time. And uh, in fact, as I mentioned before, the biggest supermoons we get are in the winter. So the fact that it's happening near the solstice is just a coincidence, but it's another chance to talk about the astronomical changes and how they affect the Earth and the seasons. And I think that's the best way for people to get into science, is just start observing things like the moon, the seasons, and ask questions about why these changes take place. So if nothing else, a wonderful chance to talk about that. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you chatting with me. Thanks. Great. Have a good, good, good day. You too.